And good evening there, everyone, and welcome here to Mobile and Cup Series All-Star Race Qualifying under the lights at FTF Super Speedways. We're getting ready here for 20 drivers who have locked themselves into this season's All-Star Race to take to the track, show off their stuff, and try and start on the pole position or maybe even just the front row for the All-Star Race because this could very well be a track based on what we've seen when we were here for our season finale in Season 7, where track position can be key. But we will see if that's going to come into play here in the non-points events of the Oreo Mobile and Snickers Cup Series All-Star Races for Season 8. Taking a look at Jake Cole making his return to the NSRA. Jake Cole is currently not running in any NSRA-sanctioned events right now in Season 8. Nice to have him back as he'll be going for an all-star race win here. He's driving the number 29 machine, and Jake Cole is locked into this all-star race due to a win last season at Texas Motor Speedway. This has definitely been a slightly different season for Mobile and Cup Series drivers. Only nine events have been run, and we're already here to the all-star race weekend. We did have an off week while the Snickers cars ended up going to Infineon and so we've only run nine events nine different winners here this season no repeat winners yet in Mobile One Cup Series competition in the eighth season and we're gonna first off during this first session of the qualifying for the all-star race we are going to jump through the field and show you the drivers that are locked into this all-star race and why why they are locked in via wins earlier on this season or after the Season 7 All-Star race last season. There's Joshua Collard. Joshua actually gets into this race via two wins. He won the Coca-Cola Speedway race here earlier on this season, but he also ended up winning the Mobile Cup Series event from Lime Rock last season in Season 7. His two wins coming with two different teams. The nine was out of uh, Richard Petty Motorsports last season his win at Lime Rock, and then his win here this season with Michael Norman Motorsports in that 33. There's a couple drivers coming off pit road. We're going to jump to the drivers that are actually running time lapped right now, and that would lead us to the 18 of Bob Burgess, former winner this season, one back at Atlanta. Bob Burgess, ever since his win at Atlanta, things have not really been going well for him, and one thing that we've talked about before in previous All-Star Race weekends is the All-Star Race is a non-points event. So you can use the All-Star Weekend to kind of get your mojo back. Get back into good form in making a run for the chase during the second half of the regular season. And that's, I think, something that Bob Fergus and this 18 team need to do. They don't really want to have to rely on that solo win at Atlanta to get them into a wild card spot. They want to be consistent because when they make the chase, consistency is key. And so we're going to have to see if maybe, just maybe, if that 18 can go to victory lane here in the All-Star race, maybe we could see something out of him in the weeks to come during the second half of the regular season leading up to the chase for the championship. Right behind him is Cody Lamas in the number six, Cody Ended up uh, doing pretty well in the qualifying session in the Truck Series race here last night. Here tonight in the number six that he drives here in Season 8. But his win that locked him into this All-Star race came in Season 7, which was at the Tricky Triangle of Pocono. Right behind him comes Dylan Young. Now Dylan Young has three wins that lock him into this All-Star race. He ended up winning early on this season at Las Vegas, but he also had two wins last season in Mobile Cup Series competition, wins at Kansas and Homestead, Miami. He's the only driver coming into this race that has three wins, locking him into the All-Star race. Two drivers come in with, uh, I'm sorry, make that four drivers come in with two victories locking them in. We've just seen Joshua Collard, and we'll get to the other two, or other three, I should say, in just a moment. Matter of fact, there's one of them right there, Wolfgang Mason, former winner this season at Auto Club Speedway in Fontana, California. He also had a win last season at Talladega Super Speedway, the next to last race of the season in Season 7. And Wolfgang Mason, too, if I'm not mistaken, is a former Mobile Cup Series All-Star Race winner. I'm trying to remember which of the Masons came out on top, but I remember 
that uh, Wolfgang and his brother Ralph, who currently does not race in Mobile Cup Series competition this season, that the two of them ended up uh, finishing 1-2 in an all-star race. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe it was Wolfgang who came out as the winner. So can he go for yet another all-star race win in Mobile Cup Series competition? We'll find out. Harrison Lankford makes his return to Mobile One Cup Series competition. Lankford right now running full-time over in Snickers Cup, but comes back for a one-race deal here after he had a victory last season in Season 7, which was at Charlotte. He ended up uh, picking up that win, driving the number 60 for Roush Fenway, and Roush Fenway giving him this one-race deal in the number 16. So we'll see if maybe uh, back with his old team... From Season 7, if maybe Lankford in a one-race deal can go to victory lane in the All-Star race. James McLeod, another of those drivers that I was talking about that uh, ended up getting in via two wins. Now, this is the one that's going to be interesting to James McLeod because his two wins that lock him in are, one, Season 8, Daytona, the season opener, which is a restricted plate track, but get this. His other one was Season 7 in the season finale, at FTF Super Speedway, the only driver in Mobile Cup Series competition in NSRE history to have a win at this track. Could that put him one step up on the rest of the competition? He knows how to win at this track. Will he know how to be able to do it again here one season later? Jake Rogers, He's here in the All-Star Race in the number 19. He's a winner this season. He won at Rockingham, UK. And uh, this team's been struggling a bit since that win at Rockingham, UK. But like I said about Bob Fergus, it's an opportunity here in a non-points event for drivers to be able to pick themselves up by the bootstraps, realize we got to get more consistent finishes, and use this All-Star Race as a springboard to be able to do that during the second half of the regular season. Right behind him, LJ Mills, one of, of two rookies locked into this all-star race we're really lacking with rookies here this season I'll tell you in these all-star races we only had Caleb Farrell locked into the all-star race for the truck series event and right now we've only got LJ Mills and Tristan Folks, the last two drivers as a matter of fact to go to victory lane this season in the Mobile Cup Series competition LJ Mills winning of course at Charlotte Folks, who we'll get to in a moment winning at Dover but LJ Mills we'll see how he does here Caleb Farrell as a matter of fact don't forget the only rookie that was in the uh, Oreo Trick Series All-Star Race, and he qualified on the pole ahead of all the other veterans. Can LJ or Tristan do something like that here tonight with just a little under seven minutes remaining? Sean Galligan getting into this All-Star Race due to a win at Rockingham UK last season, a former Mole One Cup Series champion. This, I think, has been the worst season so far for the 64 that car is usually way up in the top 10 of the point standings, and Galligan has been struggling a bit here in this season of Mullen Cup Series competition. We'll see if the former champ can maybe do something with an all-star race win here this weekend. We know he's doing well in Snickers Cup Series competition, but he can't seem to bring that success over here to Mullen Cup Series racing. Side by side between a couple of drivers running one race deals. Austin LaPlante on the inside. He ended up winning at Daytona last season. And he is to the inside of Dylan Schwallenberg, who won last season at Indianapolis. Those two won it running one race deals. LaPlante in the 62. And Dylan Schwallenberg in the 24. There's Tristan Folks. He's the most recent driver to go to victory lane this season. Folks actually trying to get a run on the high side around the Linden Wright machine. As I said, Tristan Folks, one of two rookies, including LJ Mills, to make this all star race. And Folks is going to try and maybe do what Caleb Farrell did and put a rookie on the pole for the all star race here in Mobile. Farrell did it in trucks. It's Linden Wright goes to the bottom. Linden Wright driving in his own number 81. Sponsorship of Team Fortress 2 and Steam. And Lyndon Wright gets into this race due to a win at Watkins Glen last season. He ended up driving the number 43 for Richard Petty Motorsports last season. Now in a one-race deal ride in Season 8, trying to win the All-Star Race. Daniel Day, back in a very familiar ride. Daniel Day in the 66. Daniel drove this car back in Season 6. I don't believe he drove it to a victory, though. 
But his win last season when he drove the number 22 is what got him into the All-Star Race. As a matter of fact, he was a two-time winner last season, but his win at Thornton is what locked him into this All-Star Race event. He's in the number 66, a ride that he drove two seasons ago, but did not put in victory lane. Could that change with a win here in the All-Star Race? It'd be non-points, but it still would be a trip to victory lane. It's right behind him is Bob Jones in the 15. Bob Jones has actually been having a rather decent season with that team and Bob Jones had a win last season and it came at Atlanta I also know he had a win in Mullman Cup Series competition back in season six which came at Talladega Super Speedway so he knows how to get around restrictor plate tracks and we'll see what he can do here at FTF Super Speedway right now fourth fastest on the radar we're running out of time here so I should probably go a little bit quicker through this field in introducing everyone George Roke in a one race deal here, the Flex Seal Chevy Camaro, number 01. Roke gets into this due to a win at Shans Elite last season, so he's in for a one race deal. Levi McIntyre end up winning earlier on this season at Talladega Super Speedway. That was enough to lock him into the All Star race. There's Collard, who we've already talked about. Let's see if there's anybody I've missed here. There's one, Charles Jackson, in the number 11. No wins this season, but he is running full time in season 8, so. He didn't have much trouble locking up a ride. His Joe Gibbs Racing Toyota will be in this field, and he gets in due to a win last season. Actually, two wins last season, I should say, at Darlington and the dirt track of Velton's Arena. Let's look through, see if there's anybody I might have missed. I don't think so, but just want to double check and make sure. Don't want to miss anybody. And I think I got everyone. So let's jump to the leaderboard and see who's currently sitting on pole for the All-Star Race. And it would be the number 19 of Jake Rogers and the number 51 of James McLeod, who have put together the fastest laps. Rogers with a 141.540. James McLeod about 5 100 slower with a 141.592. Then it's Bob Fergus, Daniel Day, Bob Jones. That's the top five. LaPlante, Dylan Young, Charles Jackson, George Roke, and Levi McIntyre would make up the top ten. And they're going to catch up here to the number 16 of Harrison Langford. That's going to slow them down, but if they slow up enough, that 16 may be able to merge with them, and they'll have a three-car pack. Not seeing a whole lot of pack racing going on here. Oh, but we just had a driver utilize pack racing to get himself up to second. Bob Jones and Daniel Day working together here. They've just displaced James McLeod from the front row. Move Bob Jones to second and Daniel Day to third. But they are both still two and three one hundredths behind Jake Rogers' fastest lap. I don't think Jake Rogers' lap ended up coming from being a big pack either. I think it was a two-car tandem between himself and James McLeod. So will it be a two-car tandem here of the Ford of Daniel Day, the Toyota Bob Jones, who maybe can displace him from the pole position? Right now, Joshua Collard has jumped up into the top 10. He's now 10th fastest. He was one of the first cars on track. But not really seeing a lot of pack racing here, which is usually what you see drivers do, especially during qualifying sessions, because that's what gets them the faster speeds and has them start further up at the front of the field. This is a very big racetrack, though. This is, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, a five-mile racetrack, FTF Super Speedway, and it doesn't really take them too long to get around this racetrack either, quite honestly. Let's see if they run any faster lap this time... Oh, uh, they ran it faster, and that puts them on the front row. 141.516 for Bob Jones. 141.518 to 1,000 slower is Daniel Day. It looks like those two could be making a case for themselves to start on the front row. And the two-car tandem apparently is working here at FTF Super Speedway. Think about it. What if the All-Star Race goes into a long green flag run and it comes down to having a partner with the field all broken up? Make for a somewhat rather boring All-Star Race, I'll grant you, but 
gotta prepare yourself for any kind of scenario because the All-Star is a non-points event. These drivers have nothing to lose. They're going to race just as hard as they want to. They're going to strategize as much as they can to be able to get themselves across that start-finish line first and earn a trip to victory lane with the title of Season 8 All-Star Race winner. So throw all that into the pot and you can basically throw out any scenario and it could possibly happen. Well, Daniel Day and Bob Jones, two fastest on track right now, but I think maybe catching up here to Lyndon Wright could slow up this possible lap time, but I don't really think it's going to matter much. I don't think anybody's going to be able to beat them. Levi McIntyre just jumped up to fourth fastest on the scoring monitor, and his two teammates, Harrison Langford and Cody Lamas, are now eighth and ninth fastest. But I think you're looking right now at your current pole sitter for the Mobile Cup Series All-Star Race. Bob Jones in the number 15. The panhandle Toyota. Nope, he just got displaced. He'll start on the outside of the front row. Daniel Day just ran a 141.435. You gotta think that's maybe because he got the tail draft off the 81 of Lyndon Wright or something. But whatever the case... He just took the pole, and he is going to have it by just about over a tenth of a second over Bob Jones. But they will still both start on the front row. Only Daniel Day will be credited with winning the pole positions. I believe qualifying session is about to be called. It is indeed. Session is complete. Daniel Day will start on the pole. Bob Jones second, then Rogers, McIntyre, McLeod. Fergus Collard, Young Schwallenberg makes a late appearance into the top 10 in ninth, and Harrison Langford will start in 10th. A former All-Star Race winner, Wolfgang Mason, will start dead last out of the drivers locked into this All-Star Race. So it looks like we're going to have a total of 23 drivers in this All-Star Race, including the two drivers that will get in via finishing first and second in the Mobile Open, and a driver that gets in drivers via the fan vote. So I hope you guys enjoyed this qualifying session. This is the way the drivers will start for the Mobile Cup Series All-Star Race. Let's head now for our next event, which is going to be Snickers Cup Series qualifying for the All-Star Race. As we continue on All-Star Race Weekend here on the Ashray Sports Channel, offline racing at its best.